you can find us on the internet, on Facebook. All our information is there. We have a, a form that you can download and subscribe if you're interested. So thank you. Our next speaker, I would like to introduce Nathan Summers. He's, he's already spoken at Pitcher Critter before, but a totally different project, um, topic. Last time Nathan was on stage, he spoke about his um, um, understanding of music in, in a different way. And, but tonight he's, he's going to talk about something totally different. He has lived in the Blue Mountains for the past 15 years. He's a musician, he's an artist, he did a punk uh, music radio show on, on radio station 2 R for how many years, Nathan? 22. A long time on the radio. Uh, Nathan also has a strong interest in bushland and landscape management, as well as the affinity with the Indigenous Australians. Uh, Nathan recently uh, did a trip down to Victoria, and he's going to tell us about his um, trip to the south. Thank you, Nathan. Yes, well, welcome. Hello, Petra Kucha. And, oh, here we go, Nathan Summers. Yes, I'm Nathan. And I've recently done some trips to Central and Western Victoria and was quite impressed by the things happening there, which included some exciting things happening in the Aboriginal world. One thing that caught my attention in particular was around Lake Conda in West Victoria, an area that is known as the Budge Beam Landscape, and I'm going to share this with you. Now, Budge Beam around Lake Conda and Mount Eccles has a fascinating landscape with heaps going on. There's a developing managing, management process and a lot of potential, including tourism. Some things in particular highlight include a pre-European landscape with stone hamlets and complex fish traps, um, uncovered um, ancient human occupation sites, land acquisitions and co-management, and language and stories being made public and easily, public available and easily accessible. Now for some context, I'll provide a very brief background to Aboriginal Victoria. Okay, in historical times, Victoria could be looked at as a series of broad cultural units. In southwest Victoria, there was a group of tribes in which the language marriage totems came through the mother, this being Crow Kitchen Gamach, or the black and white cockatoos. Through central and northern Victoria, there's a group of tribes fully known as the Kulin people. Most of these had marriage totems with the father, Bunjil and Wan. Um, the Ipsane had a group of tribes known as the Gurnai. There were the Snowy Mountains people and the Murray Murray, Murray River tribes, including Yorta Yorta and Wemba Wemba, which you might know about. By the 1860s, seven missions had been set up in Victoria. These being A. Cumra Gunja on the Murray River on the New South Wales border at New Yuchuka, near Barma. Um, B. Lake Tears and C. Ramiyuk in Gippsland. Um, D. Corrandurk in Hillsville um, in the Yarra Valley. And E, Framlingham on the Hopkins River near Warrnambool. Um, F, Lake Conda near Mount Eccles. And G, Ebenezer on the Wimmera River in Western Victoria. And these form the basic layout of post-contact Aboriginal Victoria. In addition, there were some official camping reserves and also border towns such as Mildura, Swan Hill, and Kingston make an impression too. As this talks about the um, folks in Western Victorian people. And one initiative really worth seeing is the Brambuck Interpretive Centre in the Grampians National Park named just after the story of the Brown Brothers. Now this is an excellent interpretive centre with so much information, I really recommend it. This is a great joint venture of the various Western Victorian Aboriginal groups. Um, well worth going to. Now focusing on Budge Bim, I must talk about the landscape of West Victoria to put this into context. Uh, much of Southern Victoria, from Coldap to Mount Gambier in South Australia, is composed of very recent volcanoes which erupted from 35 to only 7,000 years ago. This forms black basaltic multi material, and the landscape today is very rocky with evidence of fresh volcanoes all over the joint. Now, this rocky landscape is teeming with rivers and creeks which are fairly saline and a very good habitat for eels. The short feed eels use these rivers in their amazing migratory cycle, which includes spawning in the Coral Sea. Eels were a particularly important food source for Aboriginal people in this part of Victoria. In historical times, one location very famous for eel gatherings was Lake Bolac, west of the Victorian goldfields. All along Salt Creek, Aboriginal clans from miles around would gather every few years to feast on eels, and these were great, uh, big events. In recent years, a biennial eel festival has commenced at Lake Bolac, initiated by Neil Murray of the Rumpy, Neil Murray of the Rumpy Band, who was born there, and involves Aboriginal people associated with the lake. 
Many of these rivers have relatively permanent Aboriginal populations that focus on the abundant eulon and fish resources. There are a number of historical records of permanent hamlets, and here are some drawings from the 1840s from Mustons Creek. I'm remnants to these remain, although much was lost during the white contact period, partly due to fierce conflicts in this part of Victoria, some of these events known as the Umarella Wars. Okay, another legacy from this intensive and relative permanent settlement was sophisticated aquaculture, including fish and eel traps. Here are some examples of fish and eel trap systems in Dalek Creek in the Budgebing landscape. There was evidence of swans being joined together by channels, and where the eel traps were also used. So what is the Budgebing landscape? Mount Eccles, a resident volcano in southwest Victoria, is known to the Gondich Murray as Budge Bim. Lava flowed from here between 30,000 to 7,000 years ago, forming a rocky landscape we see today of the Dalek Creek system, including Lake Conda. There was a Gondich Murray legend about this too, of one of the key grading people. One thing of note in this landscape too is a particularly elaborate fish trap system at Lake Conda. Um, drawings were made of this in the 1880s by a surveyor, Alexander MacDonald, and this system is still visible today and quite impressive. Drainage projects last century have significantly reduced the water levels of Lake Honda and around other areas, although this is slightly being rectified. And this is all about eels. So in the Budgeman landscape in Dala Creek, there are smoking trees in which eels are smoked, both for food storage and for, for trading. Here is one of the Gurundish property. There are numerous remnants of stone hamlets in, in the landscape too, and clusters of tills 2 to 6 to 16 were common, as well as descriptions of villages up to several hundred people. So some more background on history. Um, the southwestern part of Victoria, including Lake Conda, has been occupied by a language group called the Gondich Mara. A mission was established at Lake Conda in 1869, and by 1919 the mission closed, and as with much of Victoria, people were pressured to leave. Many people at Lake Conda resolutely stayed in the area. By 1980, a landmark native title case in Victoria involving Onus and Franklin versus Alcoa over an aluminium smelter of Portland resulted in the return of Lake Conda mission to the Gondich Mara people. This process took several days for full outcomes, but has resulted in advancements on how Victoria negotiates native title, including an approach of mediation rather than fighting in courts, and this is very different to other states. Now today, uh, Mount Eccles National Park is co-managed by the Gundich Murrah, a uh, traditional corporation. They have also managed five freehold parcels in the Dalek Creek area and Umarella landscape. They've got 10,000 hectares and includes these aquaculture and stone huts. In addition, the Gondich Mara people have rights to 130,000 hectares in the Glenelg region. Um, look, there are other places of interest. This place is Moidul um, at Point Ritchie on the Hopkins River at Warrnambool. It's got layers of stuff um, which goes back 7,000 years, but under, it's also got volcanic stuff from years ago, and they reckon there could be possible human occupation that's 80,000 years old. So it's extremely exciting. Um, it's an exciting landscape. The Budgebeam area is currently being listed as a World Heritage status, a process which Alco is helping to sponsor now. As mentioned, the process of managing this landscape with the Gondish Murray is still being developed. You can see these sites, although this is a little ad hoc. Plans uh, for organised tourism, tourism underway, and things are kicking off shortly, and I reckon this will go off. So check it out. And another thing that's very exciting, um, there's a lot of material that's been freely available. Um, there's something just humming in Victoria. Uh, there's a lot of material available on the internet and there's books and stuff. This includes language, historical background, culture and culture land management. And land, yeah, land management. And um, this relatively open approach to information has been um, a conscious decision of the Gondich Murray people. And although there's material that's Victoria wide. So the, yeah, the Gondich Murray actually made a conscious decision to put stuff up there. And there's heaps of stuff available. It's exciting. Um, there's a links to material which I, I can hand out to you. It's on the screen. Look this stuff up. It's great. And um, I reckon this area is going to go off soon. So, yes. Here we go. I'm going to hang this out at the end. Thank you very much, Nathan. Nathan's got a few more trips down to the south to do a bit more research and he's actually really um, into, into the uh, indigenous culture, not only in the Blue Mountains but also down in, the, you know, in Victoria. So thank you for that. Anybody, everybody, thank you for coming. That's it for the show. I really appreciate your, your, your